<clears throat> hey guys, welcome to my uh, <clears throat> humble abode here at five in the morning. So I wanted to talk briefly about one of my favorite authors and a specific book by him. It's uh, Philip K. Dick. He's a philosophical science fiction writer with a lot of background in mysticism and leanings towards Gnosticism, which I'll talk about for a brief moment. And um, the book is The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, which uh, was important for me in clarifying some things. So I'm not going to shy away from being weird, or because often being weird is an excuse to avoid things that we experience at the risk of sounding crazy. But I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> uh, first of all, Gnosticism is an early brand of Christianity that was pretty much blotted out by the church. And what does that say? Uh, specifically because the Gnostics taught that a practitioner can know God directly through their own being. And they also taught that uh, a lot of things about the scriptures that were uh, pretty controversial. Uh, one of them, for instance, is uh, in the story of Adam and Eve, uh, it's traditionally interpreted by the church that the serpent who basically uh, tempts Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge, which leads to the fall, it is the representation of Satan or the bad guy. But the Gnostics taught that the serpent is actually the good guy because the... I just listened. It sounds like I'm really well read in the subject, which, I mean, I have some background, but, like, I just listened to a, a little YouTube video about this today. <laughs> and um, so uh, the Gnostics taught that the serpent is uh, the, good, the good guy in the story because, basically... He, the serpent says, y you guys need to wake up and not take this from God and uh, have consciousness of what good and evil is. You can't just let yourself be blind and sort of uh, thrown to and fro by this big bad bully. And uh, there's a concept in Gnosticism called the Demiurge, which is specifically that this world is not run by a benevolent, loving God, but an evil God. And this uh, view used to be very strange to me. It's not strange to me anymore. Um, because when you first wake up from your conditioning into your freedom, it, you're just so impressed with your freedom itself, the, your true nature. But then you start saying, why wasn't I awake to my own self before? What was it that was keeping me from noticing who I was if I was right here? What was it that was distracting me? Don't be so sure that there's not something that's blinding us from this. So the Gnostic said the serpent's the good guy because Basically, the God of the Old Testament in Genesis is evil. It's a false God that is trying to keep humanity from being conscious and who lies. For instance, I heard, I heard this in the YouTube video also, but I'll pass it off as something I researched. Um, for instance, uh, the God says that, you know, if you eat of the tree of good and knowledge of good and evil, then um, I'll kill you. I'll kill you, Eve. I'll kill you, Adam. He eats. Or, uh, they both eat. And then, uh, <laughs> uh, the serpent comes up to them and says, Did not your God say that you would die if you ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? They say yes. And they, he says, Did you? They say no. There's a lot of strange things in the Old Testament. I mean, when I was in jail, I was in jail for the last month. <laughs> um, I read, I read parts of the Bible. And I studied comparative religion and all that, but I hadn't really sat down with something that wasn't a secondary source and just read it. And there's a lot of strange things in Genesis even, like uh, 
it doesn't say we're made in God's image, singular. It says we are made in their image, plural, which is polytheistic. So this gets back to Philip K. Dick, finally, and the three stigmata of Palmer Eldridge. And it's a, I mean, you should read the book, read everything PKD did. He's great. Um, he's a great way of communicating aspects of truth that aren't normally approached uh, in little stories that are really mind-blowing. And uh, in the Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch, the whole question, he usually has some sort of philosophical question he's exploring. The whole question is, if you have a religious experience, and it is kind of a commentary on the LSD culture in the 60s, if you have a re religious experience and experience a higher intelligence, how do we know from our perspective as human beings, our limited perspective, which is curtailed to our specific biology and the information it can handle? Because there, how do we know, for instance, that there's not such a complex, infinite array of realities that our biology can only see a certain spectrum? We do know that. Uh, we only perceive a small amount of the visible spectrum of light and hear only a certain frequency of hertz. Uh, uh, as far as sound goes, and uh, I mean, most of the universe, uh, uh, at least theorized by physicists, which are of course limited in their way too, but most of the universe is dark matter, which is um, matter that we don't perceive directly. So, uh, with that in mind, how do we know if we perceive something that's from the spirit world, which by which I mean some a part of reality that we don't perceive with our biology, at least under normal, quote unquote, normal, societally promoted cultural functioning of the body. The spirit world's anything outside that spectrum that's not in three-dimensional visible reality. And it's been my experience that there is a lot more that we can see and experience than what we ordinarily call the world. So the question is, if we experience a higher intelligence, how do we know that that's a God or that that's God, and not just a entity that's a higher form of intelligence that was here before us, that's manipulating us and using us for our own, for its own purposes, for its own agenda. And it's a it's a scary question, and I think it's a very important question. I've been this is at the heart of really everything I say, because uh, I talk about conditioning and all this, but it's been just come out and say it, it's been my experience that there's some sort of force on a different spectrum of reality which is manipulating us. Why is there so much suffering in the world? Why do our motivations so often lead us astray and create more pain and fear? Where do our motivations even come from? So, in the three stigmata, there's an entity called Palmer Eldritch, which is a human being. He goes out, he, he goes on a voyage to a neighboring star system, and he comes back with a drug called uh, Choosy. And choosy is a play on LSD. It creates, and this is going to be a lot to take in all at once, but it creates a simulation of the universe that the person who takes the drug can get stuck in. And, um, but it's not actually Palmer Eldridge, or at least it's kind of hinted that while he was in the neighboring star system, some sort of other consciousness got into him and came back and started spreading itself through this drug into other consciousness to try to take over the, the world. And uh, this may sound like a crazy sci-fi story, but who knows that the world isn't a little bit like a crazy sci-fi story. I would contend that it is. And uh, <laughs> it's just, this is uh, important. And it's uh, a little difficult to talk about, honestly. And my eyes are watering. I don't know if that's because, whatever, because it's fucking 6 a.m. <laughs> but, um,
just in the same way that we raise cattle for food. There, there may be something which raises us for a certain type of food that it gets something out of generating fear, generating pain, generating suffering. Call it the demiurge, call it demons, call it fucking reptilians, call it fucking just conditioning how we experience it in our minds. I'm open to that too. But um, some force is at play in the universe which is keeping us in an illusion where we relate to ourselves in a neurotic way, where we're constantly creating our own suffering or being manipulated, being forced to create our own suffering. And that's the possibility I'm talking about in this video, that perhaps some sort of intelligence is manipulating us and spreading itself through our consciousnesses, through our behavior, through our actions, through our thoughts, through our beliefs. Why do we care about ideas? Why do we protect ideas with our life? Why do we go out and die for ideas? What are ideas? What are we protecting? Whose agenda are we protect protecting? I just ask that you have an open mind. And uh, I want to talk about this as someone who's been skeptical throughout my whole life, who's done all sorts of research and fucking search for truth as much as I can and continue to, always deepening in that. Just know that I didn't jump out and go, oh, woo woo, there's these other entities or beings that are manipulating world events. I didn't do that. I had unexplainable experiences when I was a teenager um, of these other beings on mushrooms. And uh, I was very skeptical for a long time. I, I made these are symbolic productions in my own mind. They don't appear like that. They're not like dream images. They, they appear autonomous and as if they're non-corporeal, meaning non-physical beings made out of a different sort of matter, of light, of information, of living information, to use another Dickian sort of term, that transfer themselves between human beings like parasites between hosts. And this is something I get into, it's almost like the core of my book, which I'm hoping to get out as soon as possible, because right? I think it's important. That's why I write, because I think it's important. I don't write for my own self-aggrandizement. I write because I love all of you and somebody has to talk about this stuff. And hopefully a lot of people. I don't feel that I own the information. So, the idea I'm just really this video is just for the transmission of a seed, a singular idea, which is that the voices you hear in your own head, the feelings and the thoughts, aren't your own. And don't give in to any new age idea or mystic mystical idea. There's a lot of wisdom in mysticism. There's a lot of wisdom in science. There's a lot of wisdom in any pursuit of knowledge, but there's all sorts of other energies which are manipulating us and causing half-truths and lies to get in with the transmission of truth. And only you can be your own authority in this area. Only you can decide what's true and false. Um... I think that's good for now. <laughs> mm. I love all of you. Night, guys.